Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 45 of the Peak of Serenity podcast. As always, I am one of your hosts, Emelson, and joining me this week, we have Anomaly. Hello. And, uh, well, among other things, Shadowlands sort of came out this week. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but... That's gonna be the topic for our show today. We're just gonna we're gonna sit here and we're gonna talk about the Shadowlands release, how it's gone, what we've done, what we think, and uh what we're excited for next week. And maybe some things like I've heard a lot of people thinking that we should be able to get to renown four or number five this week. We're gonna talk about, you know, I know it's a little bit late in the week for this, but what you should be getting done week one and then week two in order to keep up with your character if you're planning on raiding on so that kind of thing but uh before we get into that um we have some stuff from this week that happened um that i think we should talk about as well yeah i mean i think the uh the big thing was of course shadowlands launched on I guess Monday uh, evening U.S. time or Monday afternoon, depending. Yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, it was uh, it was not terrible in terms of a launch. So that was that was the big thing. I think we'll get into some of the issues I saw or maybe you saw, but um, wasn't too bad. But over the course of the week, I feel like with any sort of large patch, particularly an expansion, there's a ton of hot fixes. Um, yeah. I don't really know of any. <laughs> I just put this in the show notes. It was like, there was a lot of hot fixes. If there's anything that you think is important to bring up. Um, the only think, two that I wanted to highlight. Yeah, I think you uh, highlighted the big ones. Yeah, so the, so the first one was apparently early on in the week, probably Wednesday, Thursday timeline time frame, you couldn't swap co- uh, covenants. You basically just bricked your character. Yeah. Um, so they made a couple of hot fix changes to that. Um, so now you should be able to, by the time you're listening to this, or even as of today, uh, you'll be able to sort of swap covenants. Um, I know we've had a bunch of people from, you know, the brewmaster channels and peak, um, swap covenants because, you know, they initially picked night Fay or Necrolord, And then they Mm -hmm. saw a bunch of streamers playing Kyrian and they were like, well, why don't I do that? Um, (laughs) which I might vent a little bit about that later, but. Um, it does work now, so you can switch covenants if you would. Awesome, yeah. So that one works, and then the other, the other big one um, was that Soul Ash, which is the currency to craft legendaries and drops after you defeat the boss on floor six in Torghast of each layer, um, now gets mailed to you if you don't loot it. So previous to, I think it was that was like a Saturday morning, yeah, Friday night. Type this of happened chain. yesterday afternoon, as far as okay. I know. Yeah, um, it used to just, if you didn't loot the body, you never got the Soul Ash, which I'm going to kind of say that's on you. It does kind of suck if you forgot to loot, but um, I mean, but it yeah, gives so- you a warning if, you, um, if you're on one of the previous floors and you try to leave without using all of your powers because you got an anima yeah. power around and you haven't clicked it yet, you haven't picked your power, it warns you before allowing you to advance to the next floor. There's not a warning like that for leaving Orgast. Mm-hmm. There's like, are you sure you want to exit? Yes, no. But it's always there, like, even if you did loot it. So it seems like a little bit of like, yes, you should loot, but you kill. But also, Blizzard, please. Yeah. Yeah. So now it actually gets, it gets sent to you in the mail. If you don't loot it, like any typical, you know, loot that is quote unquote important right on corpses. So. You will no longer be missing out on Soul Ash, which, uh, you know, is it's another fun topic uh, in terms of like Blizzard changing things, I think, last minute. Um, so, yeah, they limited yeah. the number of floors, I think, to only three. We found that out like last Friday at the earliest. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that just limited Soul Ash, you know, generation. I think the cap today is 810. So, yeah. Um, which you get for doing the introductory Torghast quest plus the layer three of each of the two available wings. Each gives you 305, and then the quest gives you two for a total of 10. Yep. 
Yeah. So I mean, other than that, the tons of hot fixes though beyond this, those two major ones, like lots of little things to quests, um, some to like uh, covenant abilities and classes. None really monk related, um, at least that I could see. Um, but yeah, I mean, just a like any typical launch game, you know, tons of small little fixes coming in. So uh, they were busy this week, this Thanksgiving week in the U.S. Yes. Unfortunately, uh, developers were were a little bit busy. So. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, nothing else happened, <laughs> right? I think it was really just the launch. Everybody played it. Um, Blizzard made hot fixes, so it was uh There is one hot fix that I think is worth bringing up. Mm -hmm. Um, so specifically, one of the Fire Mage legendaries got a change this week, uh, and I know that's not the monk thing, but basically, as I understand it, it was um benefiting from haste in a way that was probably not intended um but it had been that way for so long that they had kind of like planned on it being there and it ended up being something that as far as i understand it from talking to our guilds mages probably doesn't have a big impact on the covenant that you go um if you're still planning on playing fire might have an impact if you intend to instead play arcane or frost right but uh i think that is the first substantial change that they've made in terms of balance um since releasing the game and they didn't even make it a day that happened on like monday night yeah and i heard i heard too because this I, I don't know if this is the same legendary change but i know that some changes went in like a few weeks ago and nobody picked up on them in terms of like data mining because they've they've been dropping in like sometimes the beta client sometimes the ptr client right yeah and so with like the launch coming in nobody's i, I think really looked at the the diffs you know so the live game until right now so i have absolutely zero sympathy for blizzard in that regard like if data mining gets it wrong it's yeah. their fault because at least like if it's some random spell in the dungeon or whatever like okay that's probably like a you can blame data mining for that one, but this is a legendary. Yeah, they can they can tell us how the legendaries are supposed to work and like oh we fixed this bug like if they fixed this bug four weeks ago they should have made a blue post four weeks ago saying we this is how yeah, this legendary works now. Yeah, in any event, yeah, and that just goes to like the whole communication thing where they're just not not very good at letting players know about things in their game. So yeah, yeah, no, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, like, I looked at some of the hotfix notes, and most of it is just, like, quest fixes, fixes to dungeons, you know, I think they fixed the thing with Halkias in Halls of Atonement that could make him get stuck at 96% anima, meaning that you couldn't actually progress the dungeon. There's one in the Mist of Tirna Scythe, where you could get stuck with no way to progress the maze. Oh, yeah. Um, so... That kind of fixes the the kind of thing that's like, oh, our dungeons, you know, screwed. We just gotta just leave. Um, that kind of fixes and quests being broken, that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But honestly, as far as like my experience with it, and I guess we can kind of like jump into the next section now. But like yeah. my experience with it has been fairly bug free. Um, oh, lucky you! Like I guess for some context, I play on a small server. Which has its upsides, meaning no queue um, ever. And uh, I don't really have to, like, when we're in Orbos or whatever, or, you know, on launch where it's mostly people from your own realm, uh, there's not so many people there that, you know, I can't get anything done. Yeah. Flip side, uh, legendaries are going <laughs> to yeah. suck. It's going to be very expensive. Yeah, I mean, I hit. Uh, so I play on, I play on Malganus, which is not huge, but definitely not a small server. Um, and I actually hit a bug that kicked me out of the game for about an hour on launch night. Oh yeah. So, and this bug was, if you learned a pet or mount within like probably the first, I would say six to eight hours of the expansion, you just got disconnected. And like, you're get, essentially it's one of those disconnects where like, you just freeze in the game. You don't actually see the disconnect screen. Right. None of your abilities work. 
you don't really realize it. And it's funny because one of my, I was leveling with a, a few friends and we killed a rare and got a pet or, and he like used it right away. He's like, Oh no, I think I'm getting DC. And I'm like, Oh man, that sucks. And like, and then I'm used like the running around, like doing the next part of the quest. Like I'll be like, I oh, will wait for you to get back online. And then I was like, Oh, we got this cool pet. And I click it. And like instantly I'm like, did you use a pet right before you DC? He's like, Oh yeah. I was like, Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up spending like 50 minutes with the whole, like number one, like character not, or character already exists. And then character not found for about, yeah. 50 minutes uh to an hour uh launch night which sucked yeah super super we had someone in guild the one of the tanks for the other raid team was not able to log in at all on the first night they were they couldn't even get in and do the initial mall quest um they were finally able to get in like they they gave up you know three or four hours after launch Mm -hmm. Went and took a nap, came back, and were finally able to get in at like 3 a.m. Oh, really? That's awesome. And they played some DGen hours and beat me to level 60, but. <laughs> yeah. I-, I definitely heard about that happening. Did not <laughs> have it personally happen to me, but I do know that it did happen. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was really the only bad experience. Like, and if we would have never done that, like, we probably would have had zero issues. Like, we did, even like the opening of the opening of the original mall event in Ogremar, right? You, that did take a while. There was a lot of like slide showing just cause I mean, on my server, there was probably, you know, three, 400 players in that area. So like the RP took a solid 15 minutes to kick off before like yeah. I could actually click the portal. But I mean, once we clicked the portal and got in, that was fine. The mall was fine. Like early bastion was fine. Um, and in terms of players, I, I feel like they almost over sharded that early zone. Cause we saw no one. I saw zero people. All it was definitely through. highly variable. Um, really? Yeah. Because I got, I actually, I had one bug that I did run into. There is a place in the Maw where I roll off something and got stuck in the geometry and couldn't move. Like, I could move around, but I couldn't get out. And um, so I just had to hearth, which, fun fact, hearthstones work in the initial Maw scenario, uh, despite the fact that you're not supposed to be able to leave. But <laughs> they do work, you can get back in just fine. But, like, my first shard had no one. Empty. It was, like, basically just me. Uh, second shard was full of people. I had to compete for tags and for looting quest items and all that stuff. So it definitely was pretty highly variable in whether gotcha. you got sharded into your own thing or to one with a bunch of people. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I, for me, like, we saw no one, yeah, like I said, all the way through. But even after the login, log out in Bastion, we were still clean. And then... um Maldraxxus, we started to see a couple more people. Uh, but by the time we had Ardenwald, Ardenwald was where it was like really starting to get crowded. Um, so, and I luckily we didn't hit the bug. I don't know if you heard this, but at Ardenwald opening night, the one of the first or second quests you did in there, sometimes the the uh, NPC wouldn't spawn. So you <laughs> couldn't progress the story. So you basically stuck there and like, yeah. you couldn't, and like, or it was, oh, you had to kill. It was that first quest where you had to kill the dude riding the, the fly mm-hmm. thing. And if you used AOE abilities while killing it, it bugged out and didn't like complete the quest correctly. Right. So with like, 40, I heard about that. I thought that there, was actually like a rare or something that people were doing yeah. along the way. That was a, a quest mob. Okay. Yeah. It was like, yeah, one of the first quest mobs. And like, of course, when you have like 20, 30 people there, like people are going to AOE just to oh, make yeah. sure get the tag. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So it was, uh, I didn't hit that. We luckily got through that. Um, and the only other bug I hit later on was the, um, was like the, uh, the bug if you're in the same party with with anybody and you logged out not in a sanctuary location and logged back in, you and your party people party members could be on different shards. So you could essentially like not be able to level with them until you went back to a sanctuary zone. Um, yeah. So I hit that like one time. We logged out like after I, I think we logged out at like 58, and so I logged in the next morning to finish leveling. Like my buddy, like him and I, like did the first like four or five quests, like solo basically. Yeah, um, I leveled solo, so I didn't, I didn't hit that bug. Um, yeah, but yeah, but uh, but excuse me. Other than that, like honestly, like I had none of the issues. Like, I think the the biggest issues hit a lot of the larger servers. Like Illidan was down for a yeah. lot of time. Um, I know Kazak and like the EU was down for like days. Um, I heard some stories of people like not being able to log into characters for like 24 hours. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, but I didn't hit any of those. So, I mean, everything seemed to be 
working okay, you know? Um, yeah. Um, which is yeah. surprising. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so this was... Not, oh, sorry. oh, this was my first time through the questing. How many times did you do it on beta? Like so I did it... 0.5 times? <laughs> I did it four. Okay. So yeah, I did four times through. So this would have been my fifth time, yeah. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was easy. I actually... So like, I... I think this is the best questing content that Blizzard has ever put together. Like, yeah, I don't think there's any, I don't think anything in any of the previous expansions, like even compares. Um, Legion has some really good zones that I think individually can compete, but then there's like High Mountain, which definitely can't. Yeah, sure. Um, this was, I had a really good time going through it the first time. Um, I leveled two characters this week. My second character, I did Threads of Fate and spam dungeons with people. Mm -hmm. um, because tank privilege, I got yeah. literally instant cues the whole week. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's good. I, I was very, very worried about the whole single threadedness of it. Like yes. being stuck at a point and not being able to progress, right? Yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that was, I think... To me, as long as that worked, it was a success. Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, the quests were varied enough that you, like, did different things. Like, as much as I harp on Maldraxxus being, like, a bad zone in terms of, like, the art direction, I think a lot of the quests in there are interesting enough, right? You get to see a lot of, like, old characters. Like, there's the Vosh quests and, mm -hmm. um, you know, Draca's back or whatever. So, I mean, a lot of it is... I don't know. It's it's interesting. I don't know much of the story about why they're there, but I know the names. I've killed those raid bosses before. Right? <laughs> so it's like I mean, the, cool. in, in fairness to you, there's not a lot of story that you get through the main story quest on why they are there. Okay, that's good then. I didn't because um, I, 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 I was like, I like Vosh. Uh, spoilers. Vosh shows up, and I was like, oh, Vosh is here. She doesn't explain why she's here. No one explains why she's there. I'm sure we will get a video from Novel about why she's there. Yeah. But she's in Maldraxxus. That's so funny. Yeah. But no, I think, I mean, the, the quest in there was cool. Ardenwald, I, I think the biggest thing to me zone-wise is that they're all, they're, they're four very distinct, or f I guess five if you, you count them all, right? But like very distinct zones that... um that play very well to like the aesthetic they're building. So like yeah. when you're in like Ardenweld and like doing night fate quests, like you, you feel you're in Ardenweld doing like night fate quests, right? There's not yeah. like a, they, Hey, this, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, they, they really leaned in like Ardenweld, Ardenweld, they leaned really hard on like the trickster Fey kind of thing. Like that comes in right away two quests into the zone. You're getting tricked by a Fey and then they ambush, ambush you. Um, and you have to defend yourself. And that runs through the rest of the zone as well. It's like not constant, but it pops up pretty frequently, especially if you do some of the rares or some of the treasure chests. Mm -hmm. And then that same kind of thing, like um, Maldraxxus has this, this, like, I don't know how to describe the theme. I don't know, like, Night Fair is the easiest Shitty one. yellow pull. color scheme? Oh my God. I actually liked Maldraxxus more than I expected it. More than I expected to. I, uh, the story of Maldraxxus was a lot different than I was expecting it to be, yeah. and I actually really liked it. Um, I would have been okay after before doing the zone. I would have been like, hell no, never Necrolord. Like it had yeah. to be really good for me to pick Necrolord. Um, after doing it, like I would have been okay picking Necrolord. I still picked Night Fae, but I, everyone, dude. I feel like. Every I feel like fifty percent of everybody is Night Fae. And that yeah. that's why Ardenwheel is really laggy right now. Everybody's in everybody is in Ardenwheel. I think it's funny, out of everybody in my guild, I think we looked at the numbers and like the majority of people are Night Fae. Then it's like Kirin and Necrolord are even, and then there's like Ven Venthyr like at the bottom. There's like yeah. I mean it doesn't help that Venthyr is really bad for a lot of classes. Yeah. Like straight up really bad. I, I got to Revendreth and I hit Fallen Order once and I never hit it again because it was so bad. It was such a waste of a GCD. Like, I mean, I oh, numerically, of course, it's not a waste of a GCD if you're fighting, like, a raid boss. But yeah. when you're fighting, like, a rare or a quest boss, 
Like, you hit Fallen Order, and, like, you would have been better off just hitting Rising Sun Kick. Oh, so they yeah. do more damage in the amount of time that that boss is going to be alive. Yeah, I think, I think I used it once preemptively on, like, a quest mob in, in, uh, in Revendreth that I died to um, leveling. So um, that's, like, the, yeah, like the, one of the only times I used it, which is hilarious. Um, Did but, you yeah, no, in... I think... Oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead. No, what were you going to say? Did you run into the level gates while doing the quests? No. So I 100% used Azeroth yeah. autopilot. And that just... one had you... That has you doing a bunch of extra side quests. Yeah, so it's it's hilarious. So I was doing it's, and I, we'll get to this, but I was doing the fates leveling for my shaman, and um, I was like, I'll just do Arnwald first, and do all the side quests. Like AAP has you do basically every side quest in Arnwald. <laughs> <laughs> like you bet you leave that zone at at like fifty nine and a half, and like you could just mainline the story in Revendreth and and hit sixty, like the way the route works out with them. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was. Uh, I I did not hit any of that. I was sixty like maybe three quests into Revendreth, um, and then basically just had to finish the story at that point. Yeah. So I, um, I have so one person in my guild didn't realize there were level gates, and so they were just mainlining the story the whole way through. They hit the level gate in Bastion, in Maldraxxus, in Ardenweald. And in Reverend Jeff. I think there's actually two level gates in Ardenweald and they hit both of them. That's hilarious. And they're playing they were playing a pure DPS, so they couldn't like go tank spec in and queue for a dungeon and get past the level gate. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, like backtrack and do quests. That's awful. Yeah. I don't understand why that's there with the way that everything scales. Yeah, and I'm I'm wondering if it's like, just because I understand having like the level sixty gate. If you reach the end of the story and it's like, okay. You need to be level 60 to go and pick your covenant. Right. That I would understand. But the the I'm, other gates are just like super dumb. I'm wondering if it's because of the way they did quests. Like if you pick doing the story, that the quests don't scale with your level. Like could that be the Maybe? issue? Maybe. And that way, like. Except that if you, you do Threads of Fate, you can do like all the side quests. But it's. Yeah, but Threads. And like if you. Like... If you. You could, in theory, hit 60 in Bastion. And I don't yeah. think that trivializes the rest of the quest. Like, I don't think they're too low level for you. Gotcha. So I, I don't know. Yeah, that would be the only thing I'm wondering is, like, if Blizzard was worried about, like, the way they set up fates and the scaling, that it, it only works if you select fates. And then, like, if you select doing the regular campaign, it, like, doesn't scale right, like, XP-wise. And that way, if you just mainline and hit 59 or whatever, you'd have to, like, do a bunch of stuff to, to get to 60. But yeah, That actually might the... be the bigger thing. It was, like, if you only do the campaign quest and only end up at, like, 56, and you're, like, yeah. hit 60 before you can do your pick your covenant. It'd be a ton of backtrack. Maybe it was just, yeah. like, a preemptive, like, if someone's yeah. going to try and do this, we'd want to make sure they're not, like, all the way to the end, get to that last scenario that they probably, you know, gate you at, right? in Revendreth, and then be like, well, you got to like, gain four levels to do this, and yeah. kind of people be a little bit more pissed off than if you, like, stop them at each one. Because, like, the idea would be, it's like, if you hit the level gate in Bastion, like, maybe you should, like, over-level a little bit. Like, maybe that's what it's telling yeah. you, and learn, and you shouldn't hit the other ones. <laughs> but Like, yeah. I actually had, like, a kind of middle-of-the-road experience where I did a bunch of side quests in Bastion mm -hmm. and then in Maldraxxus, like, a bunch of them. And I was coming out at, like, 57 from Maldraxxus. And I was pretty close. I was like 56 to three quarters. And I was like, okay, I've done so many side quests. I probably don't need to do anything but the, the campaign quest from this point onward. Yeah. Um, and I'd also done a couple of dungeons so that I could actually use the Covenant abilities as Brewmaster because I was leveling as Windmore. Um, and I hit the level gates in Ardenweald and then again in Revendreth because there's just not enough XP on the campaign quests. But yeah. I just switched to Brewmaster Spec, did a single dungeon, and that got me past it. So it wasn't like I was missing it by a lot. I was just like a little bit shy of it because I skipped gotcha. everything except yeah. the campaign quest. That's funny. No, yeah, we did. Um, I didn't hit any of those. Like we were over leveled basically the entire time. So, um, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think, was there any, we talked a little bit about the quest, but was, but was there any one that was like super memorable for you that you're like, 
kind of stuck out as you sort of went through it? Whether it's like story wise or just like how it worked and it was cool. Um, zoning into Maldraxxus and landing in the theater of pain was probably like one of the more like, yeah. oh, this is not what I expected when I was yeah. said, told I was going to Maldraxxus. Yeah, um, that was pretty cool. Kind of like three right in there. Yep. What else was there like? Um, I, I hadn't really looked at like the Venthyr zones at all. So going into the Ember Wastes or whatever they are in uh, Reverend Drift, I was like, oh, I didn't know this existed. And then doing this stuff with the mirrors was pretty cool. Um, specifically, oh, actually, yeah. there's a really cool point uh, in Sinfall when you're before you've moved the mirrors where it's just like you get up there and it's just like this giant beam of light against a gray landscape and it's like super cool and i saw that i was like wow someone spent a lot of time on that one moment that's going to be seen for 30 seconds before they finish clicking the quest objective there was a lot of those and that's what that's what i was gonna remember there's a lot of those like vista shots i feel like in mm -hmm. this expansion so like the the opening to to arnweld is you sort of like come in and down the mountain and as if you look off to the side it's like the whole zone expanse is like out there right yeah. um it's huge um even like revendreth as you like zone in you're riding some of the carriage points you can kind of move your camera around early on and sort of see like everything towers above you like all the different like city blocks and points so um yeah, they did a really good job of of sort of making that the big theme um so yeah it was uh i don't know it was cool like again Zone design, great. I think some of the quests were there's apparently so I didn't so I skipped all the cutscenes. Uh, I still have not watched them all. But apparently, wait, you didn't watch them all on beta. You also didn't watch them all leveling. No, online. no, no. And on my shaman, I'm doing threads or threat. What is it? Threads, yeah, of, threads fate. of fate. Yeah. So I'm so not you just haven't them seen them. So maybe one day, you know. Um, I figure at this point I might just watch a video of them all. But the the reason I bring that up is there's apparently like a really really like sad part of Ardenweld where like Ur Ursok okay this is gonna be spoilers but like Ursok dies like, that's in the it. that's in the um Ardenweald like uh I don't remember what they called them but like they released one cinematic for each covenant you remember that oh it's in there it's in there did you not watch that I watched those so I saw okay so I saw it so it's not that bad somebody mentioned it was like <laughs> oh it was like really sad I was like oh I died no Ursok idea. dies yeah he's already dead like we killed him <laughs> Okay, yeah, dude. I killed him. Ursok I, dies, I, and they I have to like him. make the make the sad choice to to kill Ursok. And like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so in any event, I thought it was a bigger deal. Also, did not realize like again, still don't have no idea why Ysera pops out of that seed in Ardenweald. I really want to know why that happens. Still don't know why it happens. I mean, they don't um, really explain it. Basically, my understanding of it is that you happen to luck into finding Ysera's seed. Have no idea that it's Ysera's seed, although they do drop hints. If you pay attention to the nightmare mobs that get spawned from it, they're all stuff from Emerald Nightmare. Again, did not did not pick up yeah. on that. Um so I actually thought see like I, I had intentionally not paid attention to the lore stuff of the zones or anything like that because I want I didn't you know I wanted to enjoy it the first time. Um and I actually thought it was going to be like Xavius, who we we're going to have to kill him. He was going to be like an end of the oh. zone boss because of that, because it was all MR and Lightmare stuff. And then it was Ysera. Uh, but yeah. Oh, you know what? One more standout, which you don't get to do unless you pick the Night Fae Covenant. The theater. Oh. Specifically, Ysera's reaction to everything from Legion after her death. Oh really? I didn't notice. Yeah, well, I. I've been nice she like emotes. That. It's oh. hilarious. Really? You should <laughs> definitely, like, if you pick Night Fair on a second character, or if if you're listening and you you pick Night Fair on your first character, watch the chat while you're doing that, because the Night Fair will make comments. Most of their comments are like throwaway whatevers, but yes, Sarah will emote, and it's fantastic. Awesome. That's so funny. Yeah, no, I didn't. Um. I've done I've done that before. I didn't notice the the emotes. I did it on on beta once. So, um, but cool. Um, so any other any other like leveling first couple days comments? Um, I have a tip. 
if you are doing Threads of Fate leveling, especially as a tank or healer and you're doing it through dungeons, before you queue for your first dungeon, you should fly to every single zone. When you zone in, you're given a quest that's just a fill the bar to 100% um, zone quest. And you want to get all four of them because you could queue into any random dungeon that could be for any of the four zones. Each dungeon completion, like each boss skill, gives like 35 to 4% of the completion. So you need about 10 dungeons from that zone to complete the zone quest, which you're unlikely to actually get before you hit 60 because 40 dungeons is. But around level like 58, you'll have enough done that you could reasonably go and do a couple of bonus objectives and just finish it out. Um, and I actually ended up at the point where I had finished my Venthyr one on my Paladin. And I went and I turned that in, and that gives about as much XP as doing a dungeon when you turn it in. Interesting. Yeah, I, then I need to do that on my Shaman, because I just picked up the Ardenwald stuff. And yeah, if you're, not, if you're not queuing for dungeons, it doesn't matter. You can just pick up the one for the zone that you're in. But if you're doing dungeons, because like the Bastion dungeons count for the Bastion quest, Revengereth dungeons count for the Revengereth quest, and so on. So when you're doing random dungeon queues, it matters that you pick up all four. Gotcha. Nice. That's a good tip. I'll have to actually have to do that. <laughs> I think I'll do that while we're talking. <laughs> um, so cool. So I think uh, the next sort of stuff we want to talk about a little bit was just like first week chores, right? Yeah. What do you, what do you kind of want to get done? What have you gotten done? Um, so I'll do... Actually, the one thing we didn't really talk about, let's talk about Maw and Torgas first so we can do like our first impressions plus like what you need to get done there. Okay. Kind of together. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preempt with one thing, okay? Okay. Not being able to mount in the maw is super, 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 super annoying. Like, super obnoxious. I'm playing Night Fae, which is the best covenant for being able to deal with it from, like, a class-wide, like, perspective. Wow. Is it annoying. Did you get the weak aura that counts how many times you press your mouth button? No, but I need to. <laughs> I'll link it. It's hilarious. Like, it basically keeps count of every time you try and mount while you're in the maw. It's called, like, the maw mount counter. Uh, and it tracks it both in session and like overall. So I'm at, uh, yeah, I'm at, I'm, I'm at a lot. So yeah, that's super annoying. Like it's gotten to the point where if I do the mall, the first thing I do is try and track down one of those mount bros that you can kill. And like yeah. it spawns a little mount you can click to ride around because like that's the only way yeah. I'll get around. You, in that place, uh, so. Dazing, being dazed does not knock you off those either. Yeah, it's great. It's actually really good for Because they're, they're technically a vehicle. But yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've done that. But yeah, I mean, the, the Maw and Torghast. So that's the first thing you should do. Basically, do your I Maw would, dailies. Yeah, Maw dailies, yes. Torghast, no. If you're planning to also do Mythic Dungeon Clears. Because Torghast does not award any gear rewards. And mm -hmm. this week, like, you can't get anything useful for outside Torghast. But going in, like, I level 170 instead of I level 130 makes it a lot easier to kill the last boss of the third layer. Yeah, I had so I'll tell you my Torghast experience. I think I only the only time I quote unquote failed a floor, didn't didn't complete it or failed a layer was when I went in with like three of my friends at a we were like before we had started Mythic Zeros, we tried a layer three as four people and it was not fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, like we were getting one shot in <laughs> certain mobs. Like it was just it was not a good time. I so. almost exclusively done them solo. Um, yeah, I had a random person ask me you know while i was in the tour guest like for your area if i wanted to, if i wanted to do tour guest with them and i was like what the hell sure um so i did tour guest with them and i think they were new or at least you know relatively inexperienced and were mm -hmm. having a rough time with it but uh did tour guest with them and it's very noticeable how much harder it gets when there's two oh, people yeah. in there yeah, hundred percent. It's like the scaling. I don't know if it's off or they just overscale because they realize the, like powers wise, eventually you're gonna. I think the outgoing damage ends up yeah. being too high. It's like yeah. if every person is individually tanking one of the four mobs instead of you know one person taking all four, like then it's probably okay. But that's not actually how it works. Like okay, okay. if I'm on my paladin and I hit wings. I'm tanking every mob in the room. Yeah. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. Exactly, exactly. So, no, yeah, I mean, it was... Uh, Torghast has been... 
in general has been fun. So as as a, I mean, the maw is the maw. I think it's annoying that you can't mount. I also think that if you play with war mode on, if you're on the wrong shard, leaving the sanctuary area right is basically like impossible. It, it's you just yeah, you just you might as well just either turn war mode off or go do Torgas or come oh, back later. Also, turns out that you cannot turn war mode off inside Venari's sanctum. Yes, you have to. Yeah, but. If your Hearthstone is on cooldown, you don't have to just AFK for 20 minutes. You can turn it off inside the front area of Torghast. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, cool. I have um, always I've always heard. So I had I had someone in guild that like they zoned into a shard with war mode on where it was just impossible to leave. And we're <laughs> like, well, my hearthstone's on cooldown. Um so do I just like AFK for, for 20 minutes and wait? And I was like, well, we'll try the Torghast entry area because I know it lets you change talents. Right, right, right. So, like, maybe it'll work there. And it does. So, if you get in that position and you want to turn War Mode off, go do it there. Nice, nice. Um, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, um, yeah. So, that's the mall. I mean, the mall is the mall. I just one final point is that it's luckily there's only two, there's only two dailies and like one weekly, like, wrath of the jailer you have to do so it's not too terrible um if you want to farm the rep i mean you can you can kill a bunch of rares and spend a bunch of time in there but yeah a lot of times it's pretty quick in and out you know get your get your two dailies done and, and leave so it's not too bad um torgas though torgas i think is torgas is fun like yeah. i it's it's the type of content where like if you can i've heard people complain about like hey we got bad powers like the last boss of layer three i couldn't kill i had to restart it right there's definitely some bad combos. Like, I zoned into yeah. one that was the one that was like the floor was like every second I'm there, or every the layer was like every I lose like one percent of my HP every five seconds. And That's the that, fire wing. Yeah, yeah, that, that one was, was rough. really rough on uh, my wind. I was playing Windwalker for that layer yeah. and got to the last boss and didn't have the greatest luck with powers. Like, I had some good ones. Oh, but... I, I, had two, I had two very good ones uh i basically had like i so i went into the last boss and i was like okay everything's fine i hadn't had any trouble up to that point okay mm -hmm. so like no trouble up to that point spent a little bit of uh phantasma on the potion that gives you a 30 percent damage boost as long as you're in combat and um went in without all of my cooldowns up and died so of course i lost that potion now i'm out of phantasma and can't get another one and I basically just AFK'd there waiting for my cooldowns to come back up. Did it again and just barely I was at like one percent health when I touch of death the boss to kill it. God. It was yeah, it so was really close. That's rough. So on that on my run there, I found two of the heart powers, the one that it's like HP every five seconds. Yeah. And then main stat, I think percentage, like fifteen percent main stat. I got that on my paladin just a bit ago. I was like, wow. Yeah, I got, That's two, I got really two of those good. in that fire wing, so that, that whole fire debuff, I was like, I don't even care. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I have all the hit points in the world I need. Um, so yeah, so I luckily got, I had zero trouble. Um, I did a lot of the, um, I don't know, like, anima power-wise, there hasn't been a ton of, like, I haven't got a lot of the maw, the maw rats, so that's what they're called. Like, there's one that, like, lets you explode those I things. one layer on my monk that I got four or five copies of that just because I kept getting really... Bad. Yeah. and like there's no mall rats when you kill the last boss so it's a dead power there and really that's what you should be building for because that's the hardest point of your run is killing the final boss but yeah the rest of it i would like kill a mall rat and it would explode and kill everything around it um which is kind of cool but useless on the last layer but uh, oh yeah yeah, I had that I I almost died a couple of times to using the teleport the tiger palm teleport power that oh um, yeah that when Walker gets which like because it would teleport me in front of mobs or like a wing and I'd be like I don't know <laughs> who my character is right now I definitely um, got I definitely did that and then got hit by an axe and knocked into another trap and immediately killed <laughs> and it was like oh, this is a Rube Goldberg so machine too. of death but I definitely fell for it yeah the traps are so cool too yeah I mean there's a lot of I think Torgas in general is a is a cool playground, even just to run, you know, on the side, like as as yeah. a fun side thing to do if you have a like forty five minutes or something to get through a, a whole wing. Okay, um, I have a question for you though. And um, what spec have you been doing Torgast as? 
So mostly Windwalker. I did an early run as Mistweaver, um, and it did not go well. <laughs> um, like it was a layer, it was a layer one, a layer one. So I got through it, but it was uh, it was rough. Um, but I've heard like I was talking to or Dobbs was mentioning, or maybe it was Living. Somebody was mentioning um, that there's one Mistweaver power that when you heal yourself with Vivify, the healing is like an AOE around you. It's, it's not just a mystic for power. That's a monk oh, power. You can get it oh, on just monk in general. Okay, I haven't seen it on my. I haven't seen it on the the Windwalker. Or maybe I haven't. I just haven't selected it. But, yeah, I, I saw um, it and skipped it. But yes. So apparently it's uncapped AOE. So like, yeah, as like a misweaver, you basically can like run into a group of mobs, have a bunch <laughs> You're of those spam stacks, the violent AOE, stuff, everything like, down. Every, everything dies. So, um, but yeah, I've been doing actually pretty much all with that that one run as as Windwalker, and it's been. I mean, like, like I said, I think we talked about. It. There's like been when I went with my buddies, that was terrible, um, and we died. And the, that fire one ended up being an issue until I found both those powers. Luckily, I found those powers like back to back on like the fourth or fourth floor, I think. Yeah. Uh, so it was like a very easy after that point, but up to that point it was like not fun to to be in there. So, uh, but yeah, no, mostly Windwalker. So it hasn't been. It's been fun. It's been. I yeah. want a lot of Windwalker stuff now. So Kate in chat is saying that they got that vivify power is brewmaster like over and over again yeah um it's definitely it's super strange to me like i felt like as windwalker i was getting a lot of repeat powers over and over but then there's just like this random like power that i've never seen before that shows up i'm just like i had no idea that that existed um so yeah. like i don't know it seems a little bit streaky where like you get like streaks of the same powers but then you get some new ones yeah yeah i feel like too you have to you have to search out like the hidden ones to get the really good powers like see if you mainline and like just go through like the the like the right route right and don't pick up maybe some of the side quests or kill some of like the hidden bosses because there's there are hidden bosses uh or like hidden mobs right um you miss out some of the you miss on some of like the cooler powers like general powers so and especially Um, right now it's very important in my opinion to go and seek out those powers Oh yeah. To make that last boss easier. Yeah. I mean if you can collect like, you know, fifteen hundred or I think my best going into the final boss room was like eleven hundred phantasma or whatever. Um, twelve hundred, like you're you're set. Cause you can buy every power, you can buy the extra power, and then it's like yeah. if you need the potions, you have a, a couple of uses, right? Yeah. Um, um yeah, I I definitely would say like seeking out the anima powers on every single floor. Like there's usually three to four and um the difference between going down this the the main route and getting one or two powers of floor and getting four is huge it's massive. Yeah, it's massive. but yeah you you can still get screwed on powers i did one run as brewmaster and have not done another one it was my layer three one on the second wing um and I had heard that like Brewmaster was really good at it, and I just got like absolute garbage powers. I felt like I was playing with corruption because every single power I got was like, you have a random chance to do damage. And it's just like, okay, man, um, that's not what I wanted back. Uh, so I was running around, like, I didn't see a single power related to Touch of Death. I got one power that reduced the cooldown of uh, Angry Dave, and like, that's it. And everything else was just proc damage. Oh, I I had one run where I got the uh, every time you summon your celestial, it summons more celestials. Yeah, so I, I got, got that. Like, I got this windwalker. That was cool. Yeah, I got like two of those, and then I got one where it's like the first time you're you're in combat, it auto summons your yep. celestials, and they last fifty percent longer or something. I had I had a run it. where I actually got it to the point that like that would I could summon Zuin, like permanently, constantly. That's so cool. Be- because the like duration so- was. I had the, the power that reduced the cooldown of your cooldowns by 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. And then two or three of the ones that increased the duration of Zuin. So, like, the, the cooldown was, like, a minute. And the duration was over a minute. So I could just, like, summon another one. <laughs> yeah, perma, perma Zuin. That's so cool. Yeah, stuff like that. that stuff like that just makes Torghast, I think, like, a fun, yeah, a fun place to hang out. It's just, like, messing around, right? Um, it's so. also cool, like... A lot of the content in WoW, when you're doing it on a second character, just, like, it's more of the same. Right. But I started doing Torghast on my Paladin, 
And like there's a you know, there's completely different powers because I'm in there on a Venthyr Paladin instead of a Night Fae monk. Which, by the way, there's a there's if you're Venthyr, there's a really cool power that you should try and take if you can get it on the first floor, or the like the first or second floor. That when you cast Door of Shadows, it decreases the cooldown by three seconds and the casting time by ten percent. Stacking up to ten times. Oh, you can have an instant cast, 30 second yeah. cooldown door of shadows. Um, and like, not every class is going to be like, oh, that's amazing. Because some of them are monks, and monks are like pretty mobile. But doing it as a rip paladin, it's like, ha, ah, for this run, I get to get out of my wheelchair. Just run around everywhere. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, the powers. I'm excited to, to try it on my shaman. I haven't gotten up there just yet. So um, yeah, I'm excited about that. So I think it'll be. It'll be fun. Torghast will probably be the highlight. I mean, right now it's definitely the highlight in terms of like the new expansion systems for me. So, um, oh, one one tip too: if you get lost easily and don't have your map open, if you hit Shift M is the default key, pops open like the little map on your screen, um, and you can just follow along that way. Yep, uh, makes that, it makes it easy. There's uh, vanilla features still yeah, coming exactly, in handy. Exactly, yeah, coming back in, creeping back in. So um so cool so yes yeah, so i think that's anything else on, on torgas or just the mall no in general like i'm gonna I'm, once we finish this podcast i'm gonna go do the rest of my torgas runs on my paladin um nice. but yeah nice. i like it yeah it's been fun um so yeah so then i think i'll, t- I'll take the boring parts next uh of like the chore so you have like your new emissaries their callings now they're a lot more straightforward it's literally like do a couple world quests or kill a couple rares or yeah. fill up a bar in a zone by doing either dungeons in the zone or, or world quests so. which if you get the one that lets you do dungeons doing a mythic dungeon from that zone fills it up the whole way oh really yeah. yep so today know. was the reverend dreth one in north america um and i went and did halls of atonement as part of my dungeon tour and just doing halls of atonement filled up the whole bar oh very cool very cool um so yeah, so that's the that's sort of the new emissaries. They're pretty simple. Um, yeah, and, and then... one thing, so there's emissaries and there's anima on the map in the form of world quests. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people are freaking out over like, oh, I need to do my emissaries. I need to do the anima quests. And you don't. You really don't. All of the anima upgrades are, for one thing, they're gated by a weekly quest. Right. You can only get the souls for your your order hall upgrades from a weekly quest. Nowhere else. So you will get capped by those, and there is nothing you can do about it, and no amount of anima you grind will fix that. But also, none of the uh, upgrades for your order hall impact your character's power. They're all just things that are for fun, for getting around the world. Like, there's a navigation network in every zone that you can unlock with it. It's, you know, really nice to have. But you know what it's nice to have for? Doing stuff in the zone. Not in the raid. Not in, you know, PvP or Mythic Plus. Like, nobody nobody counts the time it took you to get to the instance as part of your Mythic Plus time. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, there's nothing... Yeah, none of the upgrades... I mean, the upgrades are cool. Like, I know... We can talk about it a little bit, but I know that in Bastion, I so I'm I'm Kyrian on my monk, and uh, I did the one where it's like you empower certain points around the map, yeah, and like they can either have like loot there, like a treasure you can loot, or it'll have like a more powerful like champion you can you can fight. And some and of those can, like, champions drop mounts. Oh, they do. Oh shoot. Okay. There's a there's a Maldraxxus one that we we went and did today, and it's just a chance, like it's not guaranteed, yeah. uh, but it, it does drop a a mount. And so we got a guild group that went over and, and killed it, and none of us got it, and it was real sad, but, you know. We tried. We tried. We tried. Um, but yeah, the only thing I want to mention there is that, at least in Bastion, I don't know if like, this is in other zones, but when, when you direct that anima, there's actually a graphic in-world that, like, so Ooh. in, in the Kyrian um, Order Hall, whatever, Covenant Hall, is, like, floating above part of the world, and so the anima trail like comes out of the bottom of it and like flies through those big mirror looking things floating mm-hmm. around um oh uh, that's Bastion. cool and like fl- and you can see like the anima power like flowing in and then going to like whatever point you selected it's so the game is so beautiful like 
I hate that I like how the game looks so much because like I I like I mostly I play WoW to to raid, but like right. this expansion, I feel so much more about like the world just looks so pretty. Like I just I would be fine logging in and like doing laps around Bastion, just like looking at all the stuff. Or I you know what I mean even even just kinda, like beyond looks like there's there's definitely some rough edges still on the world building, but like I really really have enjoyed the world content outside oh, of yeah. the mall. Yeah, just like oh well, yeah, the mall. But I mean, like yeah, just like a little touch like that that you wouldn't think should be there. I dude, the first time I saw it, I freaked out. I like, <laughs> People need to come. Like I will stream this. You need to look at how beautiful this looks. I made that. I was like, I made this. <laughs> so, um, but no, like stuff like that, I think is is pretty cool. So um but yeah i mean i think yeah do your the callings are just the new emissaries generally right so you gotta yeah gotta get but those like, done one my, my point is just that like it's actually totally okay for you to skip your callings if you don't need the rep oh yeah that's true yeah um and you don't need to go and do the animal world quests um the only time you need to do them is if you need to get your renown weekly done there is a renown weekly that requires 1000 anima every week you get your 1,000 anima for that week, you're done. done yeah. That's like four or five worlds. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, there's not a... The daily stuff you actually have to get done is pretty pretty limited, I'd say. Yeah. Like, um, I say that. I'm still logging in every day and doing my callings and all quests. Yeah, some, I'm so That kind of thing, but, you know. Not, I'm not, not doing world quests. I'm not doing world quests. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not touching those. I will do ones... There are some that pop up that have, like, crafting resources... And uh, I'm doing those. Oh, yeah. I'm. We have our. We can talk more about crafting later. But I'm the guild's designated leather worker for legendary crafting, and oh, so, nice. um, I have that maxed out and have yet to start actually crafting legendaries because we are missing the enchanted leather for it because oh. the enchanter had not tapped out yet and was not ready to start crafting them. Gosh, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's not, it's, yeah, the crafting stuff. Oh. Um, all right, hold on, before we get there, one, a couple more chores things. Um, so there's the adventure table, which is new, which yes. I don't know if you've messed around with that. I have. Uh, um, so I would say it's cool. Yeah. The whole, I would say like, it's watching an, it. I would say it's an improvement over the old table. Right. Like, pretty yeah. much a strict improvement. Um, yeah. Because it's not, like, percentage-based. Like, you can add and remove, like, what you want to see. And, yeah sort of get to that level of like how much hp do my people need and damage do i need to like counteract what the other ball you know whatever we're fighting is yeah uh, but the one thing i wanted to mention about this and and i'm i just learned this literally this morning uh as i was doing my adventure table because one of my friends said it was uh you can drag multiple of the non-named troops on yeah. the, the table yeah i've seen which i didn't know so i was doing everything with four and i was like this is so hard like how am i gonna kill this level 10 thing both my guys were only level ten. Like they still do too much damage, so I was. Uh, yeah, you can put. Bad. You can put all five of them in there. Uh, you can fill all five slots. You can also. So the Night Fae have two troops available. They've got the one that's marked as damage and the one that's marked as healers. And if you put, if you like, put in Nia, and then four of the ones that are marked as healer, the damage output is going to be higher than if you put in four of the ones marked as damage. Oh really? <laughs> it's awesome. really weird. Their HP is lower, but their damage is higher. I don't know why they're marked as healers. I mean, I guess That's they do so heal. Fun. I got I got another companion from Torghast that is also marked as a healer, but doesn't actually have a heal. So they're just like a support? Question weird. mark? Yeah. Weird. Yeah, no, that, I thought, I mean, the table looks, I watched, so I've only ever watched, like, it once or twice, like, the, the battle or whatever, because it right. takes forever, but yeah, I think it's, it's really slow. It's definitely cooler. I mean, more fun, gets to sort of uh, bounce stuff around, so. Yeah, there's a couple of things that I definitely think need to go about the adventure table. One of them is, and you may not have run into this yet, because right now, most of the time, when you finish an adventure, you're companion levels up mm -hmm. if they don't any hp they lost stays gone yeah. unless you spend anima to fill expensive. it back up it's, it's one expensive. anima per hp and your companion probably has around 300 health yeah so i, I had run, one that I went poorly and it was really cost me over 250 anima to uh 
build them back up. And I was like, no, not a chance. Not Never happening this. at all. Yeah, no. Yeah, I've, I've hit that a couple of times. It's definitely been annoying or an annoying part of it has been like, yeah, having it's to just heal like, up with Anima. It's like, that's the kind of thing that they put in mobile games to keep you from binging too much at once and keep you like, oh, come back in, in an hour, you know, on your next bathroom break or whatever and log back in and do one. And it's like, I am paying $15 a month to play this yeah. goddamn game. Let me do my adventures. God damn it. Let me just click. Yeah, that's definitely annoying. I mean, it's definitely annoying. Um, because then you can you can do all this stuff on your phone too. So I mean, like, there's very little reason to log in to do adventures. But yeah, but at the same time, like the adventures take four hours plus. That's true. So it's not even like you can just spam them because you only have two companions or three companions to to send out on missions. So it's like, I don't know why that's in there. It's really annoying, and they should just take it out. Yeah, have I you agree. have agree. you managed to fail an adventure yet? Uh, yes, yes, I have. I failed one of my paladin today. Oh really? Oof, yeah, yeah. It su- It sucks. I will say with um having to wait. Luckily, I think I failed it at night, and I was like, I'm pissed, so I, like just went to bed. Yeah, and it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't take too long for their their hit points to recover. Like, I don't know how long it, it it actually takes, but like, I had that happen where I needed 250 anima. <laughs> to send them back out and it was like no fucking way man and logged off and went to bed and in the morning yeah. i got up and it was full so yeah it only takes probably like three maybe four hours or so um so yeah it's not it's not terrible in terms of like actual time but yeah you definitely have to wait for that so that one sucks um and then yeah i think i don't think there's anything else the adventure table so I'm trying to think if there's anything else other than because i want to talk about we're talking a little bit about Mythic Plus and like the the tour, but I don't know if there's anything else chore wise this week that you have to get done. We talked about tour cast, do your calling callings, adventure table stuff. Yeah, uh, I think that's basically I it. Mean, do do your camp like of course do your covenant yeah. campaign right. Do your renown quest. Yeah, you have to do your renown quest. Um. Yeah. But yeah, uh, you can pretty much just. You know, those are those are the three things. And honestly, the renowned quest I got done in an afternoon. Yeah, it was I mean, not I, very hard. Yeah, I did. I did all mine. Yeah, the first like Wednesday. What was it? No, Tuesday afternoon. We got through all of it. So yeah, I didn't even um, hit cap until night. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I had to work Monday and Tuesday, and then had stuff going on Monday evening that I didn't want to cancel. So yeah, yeah, I got, I got lucky. I just had Tuesday off, but um. We were able to get yeah most of it done. Uh, I was sixty Tuesday morning, and then they had downtime or whatever, and then we logged back in, did like the renowned stuff in a couple hours, so it was easy. Um, yeah, I guess the other big thing then this week is Mythic Zeros doing all of those, yeah. which has been fun actually. It's it's fun it's very to do new dungeons and fail, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, that's been the, so that's been the most fun. What do you think of all? Have you finished your your Mythic Zero? Yeah, I've done, I've yeah. Done all, yeah. What do you think the hardest boss is? Uh, the last boss of the other side, whatever the M guy is. That's been, that was the toughest for our group. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely up there. I think it's either that one or the last boss of Theater of Pain. Oh, actually, no. I yeah, changed my answer. Last boss of Theater of Pain. That fifty percent. Yeah. She popped off, dude. <laughs> she pops off. Woo, that's gonna be fun on Tyrannical. Oh yeah, my actually, god. I changed. I changed my answer. We wiped more there. So I. For, I think it was. I think that was. That was. That, so luckily, Theater Pain was the last one I did. Yeah. So I think we just. I was like, I don't care. I don't care if I'm sitting here for the next two hours. I just want to. Like, we will do this. Yes. Um. But that one. Yeah. That boss is like. And I try. Yeah. Because oh, there's so much going on on that boss. Yeah. There's like. like at, there's like. And a bunch of them, there's a lot of these bosses are way more complex than BFA bosses. Like, okay. they definitely took things like Azeroth from Motherload, literally being a target dummy for four of the five minutes that you fight him, as, like, serious critical feedback. And there is nothing like Azeroth. Every single boss has mechanics the entire time. And a lot of them are much more de- demanding mechanically than bosses in BFA dungeons. 
Yeah. And it, it's great, but boy, it's hard to learn some of them the first time around. Especially yeah. if you're like me and just YOLO'd in without looking at the dungeon journal. Yeah, I think I think that like the last boss of Theater of Pain was the was the one time where we were like, all right, we're gonna use one cooldown here, next cooldown later, save our heroism for here, like use your defensive as at this point. Yeah. Like here's where the spawn I was like looking at timers. I'm like, so we have we literally have like fifty six seconds to push her to fifty percent. <laughs> like or we get another spawn of the uh the ads or whatever and then we're screwed. Yeah. Uh, and we were yeah. so like that one has a, a neat thing you can do with the ads. So like you're the natural thing you would do with the ads on that boss, um, or which so they spawn at, as like she puts a AOE effect on everybody, and you need to not cleave each other with it because that'll kill people. Um, but so like the natural thing to do is just like spread the fuck out and chop them all over the place. But then you have caster mobs all over the place, just like chain casting. So what we did is um we stacked them in the corner as close as we could get without cleaving each other um and that made the ads really easy to kill actually because the size of the aoe is small enough that like you can't cleave all five of them in one go but you can like kill two at a time gotcha yeah we ended up doing a so we ended i ran with two melee uh and then i was tanking so we had three melee uh, oh. and then two casters so we ended up actually our strat was pretty good so we ended up making a, a like a four four players so one of our range converged on the boss we had four basically each cardinal direction around the boss to drop the aoe so you could just cleave off the boss to get most of them and then the one that was out our mage was responsible for counterspelling it so that it brought it in so i'd taunt it oh yeah taunt, counterspell it and brought it in that's cool. So that was like that's one of the stuff we had to talk about. I was like, all right, positioning wise, these four people all around the boss, don't cleat like we well, I was in the leather stack and we had the most disgustingly meta comp you have ever seen. Oh, really? Um it was a brewmaster, a misweaver, which like the misweaver is whatever. That's not really a meta thing, but it's whatever. And then three rogues. Oh jeez. Okay. <laughs> and Struck. because I didn't know the dungeons very well, there's a lot of points we could have shroud skipped that we didn't shroud skip, and there are some that yeah. we tried to shroud skip and then got punished for it. <laughs> like, did you know that if you shroud skip past all of the trash leading up to the mill houses in yeah. the other side, after you kill them, you have to go back and there's trash <laughs> in the way. Yeah. <laughs> and so we shredded all the way and we're like, well shit and <laughs> the trash that you have to kill there actually has like point blank aoe effects that are uninterruptible and um so we ended up just like unintentionally suiciding after we killed that boss That's because so it was just impossible to kill them inside the sewer grate and also we couldn't hold the entire room yeah. in order to not tank them in the sewer grate that was fun that's hilarious yeah we um i did have one rogue in my group and we did a lot of uh we, the only the only big shroud skip we did was like in halls of atonement mm -hmm. after the first boss you can shroud yep. skip right to the the second boss yep we did that was like the, the big one. one um but yeah we didn't shroud skip at all on the other side because i was so nervous about actually i lied we shroud skipped down to the um the one boss we had to step on bombs and float in the air so you don't explode on the group yeah in the other side so we did all that trash like down that hallway or down the whatever the the roadway is there um but yeah, I mean, there. Are, yeah, that that last boss of theater was tough. The other side was that boss was tough because number one, we didn't know what to do. Yeah. So like, the first time we just died to him casting, and then someone was like, "Oh, he's got a portal you take." So then we took the portal, and there was an ad there. I was like, "I guess we kill it." And then we clicked one totem, and then like it did some damage. I was like, "Oh," I was like, "So we have to do this again." Yeah. And like at one point, I thought they just respawned. So I was like, "Always go left, always go left." And then like the second time through, there was no mob <laughs> on the left. I was like. <laughs> What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so. <laughs> the first time I did that, we three-phased it. We had to go out three times. The first time, um, both monks used Touch of Death on their ad. And oh, they so clicked their chains. Oh, we split your group. We split our group. We just yellowed smart. the portals. The second yeah. time, we got one of them. And the third time, we got the third one, or the fourth one. Gotcha. Um, but that boss, as a triple melee comp, is actually really, like, kind of shitty <laughs> oh yeah because like the, the aoe zones that you drop or whatever because on mythic everybody gets it right or... yeah um what we ended up doing is this is a really this is a really like 
not obvious strat, I would say. So what you do is you drop them dead center, literally on the boss. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why on earth would you do that in the triple melee comp? Now you can't hit the boss. But the timing of it, when it comes out, he goes immediately into his combo. So you, it goes like you drop it, he starts his combo. And if you drop them on the wrong side, now you can't move into that side and be safe because there are circles there. If you drop them on the wrong side and you don't have grappling hook or roll or whatever up, you also can't get away from it. Get away from his cast on that side, his beam, and die. So if you drop them in the center, you have time to move. You don't block anybody off. And they explode after the first hit of the uh, combo. So you can gotcha. always get across safely. Gotcha. Because then, yeah, you're only missing out on... Like, if the first hit's the melee hit, you don't miss any DPS. Yeah. But if it's a side hit, you just use... yeah. A and there is actually... Hit. There is some space on that one to, like, DPS him from the side. Um, gotcha. Although, okay. if you are listening to this and you are a brewmaster, be very careful because there is space on that platform where you can hit him, but he can't hit you. And he will... Oh. He will smack your melee. Or, <laughs> if you're unlucky and there's no melee in range, he will start doing his, like, smash on the platform and do massive party-wide damage and just, like... Wipe your group, speaking from experience. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So do yeah, be careful know. to stay in range. <laughs> that boss, I think, yeah, you're right. Like, every boss has some crazy, crazy mechanics that, yeah, I'm not... They're, and it's not like they're hard in terms of, like, they're involved. Like, I guess what I should say is, like, they're not hard to pick up. It's just there's a lot in going on, yeah. right? Um, like, even, like, the boss... Um, the in theater pain the the portal boss so after you go through that room which i hate by the way this portal boss the the room is basically where you like uh you have to jump through a bunch of portals to different platforms and eventually get to the boss platform um it sucks because number one the people i'm running with are not very smart they thought you just ran into the portals and then they oh it dropped me this time oh i didn't know what i was doing like you gotta click it if you're clicking it right you're click it's not just drop you're clicking it and they're like what do you mean so I'm like, you, you have to click the portal, like, and then it ports you. Like, so in any event, that happened a couple of times. That was fun. Um, there's a couple of those platforms where you take it and you instantly in combat. So, like, granted, like, in my case, normal groups are fine. But in my case, I have idiots walking off the edge. <laughs> I'm, like, pulling mobs with, like, three people. I'm like, what's going on? Um, but, yeah, that boss is cool because, like, you can, like, use, like, the grasping hands for, like, certain classes that aren't very mobile. Yeah. So that they can, like, easily get their, their body back. Um. So yeah, there's a lot of like little things like that that I think are cool. Um, Honestly, like the complexity of some of these bosses is on par with a beginning of tier, I think, boss. Yeah. Like yeah, I w- some of these I are probably say, as complex as Shriekwing. Yeah, and I will say that I didn't notice the anima or sorry the covenant specific buffs being a big deal for bosses. So like, yeah, the only one. I mean, I, I'm trying to think if there there was any boss where we thought we could abuse it. I, the Venthyr, the Venthyr one is the only one potentially because you get those vials in. Um, is that halls too? That's no. uh no, that's the vials are in the sanguine sanguine depths. depths. Yeah. I still have no idea how to get the benefit from those. We you got kill them. Mobs. So you click them and then you like kill we kill mobs. mobs. I didn't get any buff. Our rogue oh, really? got a buff. Our rogue got like twenty percent increased damage. I got nothing. Oh, weird. Our whole group got it. Um, so i have no idea what was happening there but i did not get the buff (laughs) i was mildly miffed that our rogue in the group was getting the benefit of my covenant thing and i was not that sucks uh halls of atonement does have the loyal stoneborns that you can uh, interact with as a venture um and just before the third boss there is two of them in the room that you don't have to pull alongside the rest of the trash so you can kill the other trash in that room, pull both of those into the boss, interact with them as a Venthyr, and then use them to damage the boss. And they actually do quite a bit of damage on Mythic. They scale with yeah. dungeon difficulty. So as dungeon difficulty goes up, they are going to do more and more damage. Gotcha. So I guess I lied. There are. So and there, there's one before there. Halkius as well that you can pull separately. It's a little bit tricky to do because it's so close. But there, there's multiple cases where you could pull it in there and have it be a pretty big deal. But I don't think any of them are as big a deal as the Night Fae in Mists of Tirna Scythe. With... Which one is that? So so I'm just talking about the checkpoints. Like There's oh, other stuff in there too, but the checkpoints. You ever wipe on that thing and you have to run back from the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. 
That I see. Oh yeah, I like that dungeon though. It's a good one. I like the maze more than I thought I would. Yeah. Um, that one actually, uh, it's been kind of cool. We had one group after you know people had done it a couple times. We had one group where we had our healer, just like running around and figuring out what the next room was while we were killing the trash. Mm -hmm. Um. So as soon as the trash was dead, we just went on to the next room in instantly. And that was actually really nice. Um, whereas, like, when I had been hugging it, you know, in normal leveling a character, I was always doing it because nobody else knew what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's what, in my groups, I did all the I did all the matching, right? So it was, like, for me, it was doing the maze stuff, like, figuring it out, just healing, sort of AFK almost as they kill trash. And then on the boss, I always, I, I did all the calls there, so... Um, yeah, it's been it's been cool. I so I I really like this week in terms of like dungeons because it's cool to experience dungeons like for the first time with yeah. people. Like particularly the, the you know you play with it's similar like to raiding right when you first see a certain boss ability to do a boss right. It's to me that's always the best part. So yeah, I mean like the other side was great because we had a rogue that was like all right, well I'm gonna kill one and then I'll run to the other side and shadow step and kill like the next one. I'll just save my cooldowns. I was like yeah. awesome, that's cool. We'll get two um so we did that he shadow stepped fell off the platform oh yeah i was surprised <laughs> like, he made fucker. it the that phase is not that long no so we were so what we ended up doing was um so he went so i ended up going one way touch of deathing it four people went to the other side and he was trying to run to a third one to try and get three in one phase basically yeah. um and uh and yeah he like, like shadow steps. there's, a, there's like, a lot of places in the in these instances that you if you shadow step you kill yourself <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot of like edges so um that was funny like just certain stuff like that the first time we we the, yeah the first time we talked fought the last boss the theater pain also her floor geometry sucks like the floor disappears at certain camera angles on that oh fight. i didn't really do that i did run yeah. into some interesting things so like my paladin is venthyr so i the like ran into a bunch of cases with the venthyr teleport where it said no path found um oh that's not good actually bunch is the wrong word i ran into a few um where it was really annoying um actually there's one that i'm pretty sure is intentional in the other side where there's traps and you cannot oh. vent your teleport past them okay good good um Cheaters. which sucks uh but i also you know soul shape is basically blink and there's plenty of places that you hit soul shape and it uh it doesn't move gotcha. but, uh, <laughs> you still get the 50 percent movement speed after so it's not not a total loss yeah that's I think that's typical blink stuff but yeah, that's that's typical that's blink stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, but no, it's been it's been interesting. Um, sorry, was there any other interesting bugs you ran into? Not bugs, but I did notice like some of these dungeons had a very like very high amount of magic damage, very very high amount. Oh yeah, like a lot the of really hard hitting dots too. Yeah, um, and so Kate in chat actually brought up Soul Crush on um mozala and the other side which is this mechanic it's a tank buster that um leaves a dot on you equal to the amount of damage that it did to you it includes damage that was staggered like absorbed damage counts yikes okay um so doing that as a brewmaster is really rough Doing that as a blood decay is apparently also really rough for obvious reasons because they don't mitigate it. They try and heal it back, but then they're basically yeah. taking twice the damage um, as opposed to someone that like mitigates half of it. Um, so that that one's pretty rough. There's also the last boss of Necrotic Wake. I am like 90% sure that the ice bolt that they shoot is magic damage. Um, I need to actually like crunch the numbers and confirm that, but mm -hmm. I looked at the stagger breakdown after and my stagger did nothing so pretty sure that it's uh, a magic effect and like you said just a bunch of dots like plague falls really bad about that there's a lot of dots that will just crush the group oh yeah um the last boss of that one in particular if you get the um i don't know what it's called the plague apply where she like applies it to the entire group yeah, yeah, yeah. We were doing that with a misweaver, and like in theory, that's fantastic because they just hit revival and remove it, and they didn't realize that it stacked like four times, and so they cleared it at two, and then we got two more, and they had nothing. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's like there's the wait, wait. So that was that was Plague Fall. There's also the Wind Boss at the end of yeah. um, what's that? Spire. Uh, Spires right? of Ascension. Yeah, which like that if you don't do the the orbs right, that that magic dot gets real ridiculous. So, um. Yeah, a lot of magic damage in these fights. But no, speaking of Necrotic Wake, <laughs> Necrotic Wake has probably some of the coolest bosses. I absolutely hate the trash in that place. <laughs> and I hate it because it's of the room before the third boss. Okay. It's like you kill, there's like one patrol, and then there's things in each of the four corners. You kill that, and then like slowly but surely, like two mobs spawn in the center. You got to kill them. One yeah, mob spawns that's in the corner, really You got to kill that. Next one comes. It's like. Okay, what really annoys me about, about that is that they're staggered. Like when you have the stuff on the side, uh, the first yeah. one the ads spawn first, and then the big guy. The second one, okay. the big guy spawns first, and then the ads, and that usually doesn't matter, except it does matter for establishing threat. That's right. So yeah. like on my brewmaster, I like keg smashed all the little guys on the first one, and then was able to blackout kick the the big guy, and it was fine. Um, I made the mistake of on my paladin throwing my avenger shield at the big guy in the second group, and had nothing to establish AOE threat on the four little ads that spawn with him and was just like tabbing through them throwing judgments and hoping to get threat that's so funny yeah that's 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 the one like that boss is cool like i think that boss is cool with like the hook and having to like you know line it up have Um, you have you done any pug normals of that instance yet no i refuse I refuse because I like I, I did that the first time doing hero like we did we did walk in heroics and that was one of the first ones yeah. we did so we had to figure it out doing it um and yeah that was I was like I'm never coming in here if I queue into that in heroic like random heroic I'm just leaving because like it's actually okay so right now it's actually not that bad most people have gotten the news about that mechanic and know how to do it um gotcha. I've been doing a bunch of like I leveled my paladin basically exclusively through spamming normals and got necrotic wake plenty of times because there's only four dungeons you can do while leveling. Yeah. Um but the first time I did it, I randomed into that one uh while I was leveling my monk, getting past a level level gate. Um we sp- our, our combat time, I remember it 4 minutes and 45 seconds. On the first boss, or not the first boss, the the second boss, because nobody knew how to do a cleaver, with the hook, and I'm the tank, so it doesn't it doesn't ever target me, so I can never do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we finally, finally, they listened to what I was saying in chat, and tar- right. we're able to bait it onto the boss and get it out, and we lusted and killed it in like fifteen seconds, because they could all put they could all push their buttons. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. they did good damage. None of them could aim a meat hook. That's so funny. Yeah, well, <laughs> I had one, the one the one funny thing about that boss was one of the it was probably like the f- we either were doing it on mythic or like one of our last heroics. I think we were doing it on mythic. And I've I run with a mage. There was a mage in the party, and like we, he was like he was kind of talking a big game, like he doesn't make mistakes. And we're like, all right. Well, I was like I said something to him. He's like, yeah, watch this. And he like sat like with the meat cleaver. And then was I guess finishing casting a spell went to blink, but at that point the cleaver had already already like the animation already triggered, mm-hmm. so he blinked away. But then it the boss basically turned and still like hooked him and pulled yep. him back in. I'm like I'm like really you missed everything? Like what was that? He's like I, he's like I blinked. I'm like yep nope no 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 no. You, you back blinked too him. late. <laughs> too late. So that's I mean the the whole like banter with with like my buddies is is like the, so much fun. Oh so. yeah. Uh, doing doing the the world tours, uh, I'm doing two of them. I still have my Draxus dungeons to do on my paladin, gotcha. um, but uh, that's been fun. And yeah. uh, we've been getting a bunch of questions. Actually, uh, I'll figure out throw this in here. We've been getting a bunch of questions in in the brewmaster section about tanking these in pugs, mm-hmm. and um, I know it's like really tempting to do like big pulls or like pull two packs together and be efficient about it and that kind of thing and you really really shouldn't yeah oh no especially in the pug um there's a lot of really dangerous mechanics there's a lot of really dangerous things that need kicking that people do not know what they do and if you pull two packs together or god forbid three packs together even with bloodlust uh you're gonna die yeah you're, you're gonna die a quick horrible and painful death yeah um yeah, the necrotic bolts too and necrotic wake oh. stand out as being like yeah oh there's that there's that one pack one pack between the first and second boss that has mm-hmm. what is it like two or three three of them plus a mini boss 
they yeah. all cast it. That one, if you don't know what it does, it does a magic nuke to the tank, like a water bolt, but then also leaves the healing absorb for the same amount. So terrible. Um, I, I did that one, and I was like, oh, my paladin. And I was like, oh, I'm really low, uh, in a normal, even. And of course, yeah. it's a normal, nobody's kicking. Uh, this particular normal had really bad DPS, too. So I just like, you know, oh, I'm really low, let me lay on hands myself. I lay on hands myself, and my health didn't move. And I was like, oh... I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm gone. Yeah. Um, there like... is, especially in Necrotic Wake, there's hammers, orbs, and spears around that anybody can use regardless of how you use those. The orb's really good. The orb yeah. is the silence. Uh, it does an, a pulsing interrupt every one second for eight seconds. And there's one available right before that pack. And you should 100% of the time go and pick that up and use it on that pack because it makes it so much easier. It also does like a, a shitload of damage that also gets attributed to you, so you get to look at the meters at the same time. Yeah, yeah. No, that was uh, that pack was that's uh, to be fair. I think that's the only trash pack that seemed like maybe they need to tone this down a bit. Um. So yeah, but other than that, I mean, it's it's been fun. It's been just it's been fun learning it and, and yeah. sort of going through and seeing some of the the stuff that's there so it's um, been it's gonna be really interesting for me doing it when mythic plus opens and seeing like yeah. okay we can't just skip this entire section of the dungeon we have to actually do some of the trash there yeah um, i'd be it'd be fun to see how they do like certain certain instances seem interesting in terms of trash like necrotic wake being one right because there's that whole room of like unskippable trash so yeah. like you're locked into a certain percentage there halls of atonement also where like you have all you basically have your pick of the litter of what you want to pull in sort of the out front court yeah. room or courtyard, right? Um, and you can shroud like, most of the rest of the dungeon in that. Yeah, uh, there's only yeah. like there's the one mini boss that you have to kill, um, and the rest of it you can do whatever. Yeah, so I mean, there's I think a lot of them are they're not as not as linear yeah. as something else. Like Theater of Pain seems very linear, which like, is it probably just. Wrong. Despite the dungeons themselves being pretty linear, there's not a lot of open spaces in terms of like which trash you pull. They're not that linear. Gotcha. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's um. I don't know. I'm yeah. I'm also excited to see what like routes look like week one. So yeah. Um. So cool. Yeah. That's the world tour. Um. Yeah, any other memorable first week stuff? I think that was another. Well, one of the last things I had before we talk about some old stuff, but any other memorable moments he didn't talk through? Um, a lot of them were in dungeons, like you know, learning how to do Mizuala. You know, yeah. Um, a rogue in my group commented on the fact that, like, on my monk, you know, I'm, I'm of course bottom damage every pull because I'm the tank. They're all rogues yeah. and they know what they're doing. Um, and except for the pulls that I have touch of death, in which case I'm top damage. It's just such a high variance thing. It was it was so funny because uh, when you use it, especially in the Mythic Zero, a lot of things actually have less health than you as a brewmaster or like pretty close to it. You can just kind of kill whatever you want. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, just randomly doubling your damage on a pull is pretty nice. Yeah. I, de I definitely, yeah, we de I definitely started doing that, particularly when I like start like a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, you know, back talk with some of my with some of my buddies i'd be like yeah look at this pull and then i'd of course have touched a death up hit it and like jump up the meter so yeah yeah that's been that's been fun um yeah i mean i don't i don't think i have i think i talked about all the like the shadow step on on missoula was, was yeah. hilarious um the portals thing like not clicking it was funny um i'm trying to think if there's anything else that like really stood out this week uh I think maybe the other thing for me is like in Torghast, um, on my Woodwalker. Just the one run that I had where like the stars aligned, I got a ton of stuff to make Zuin better. I got stuff to oh, make yeah. him more available, make his duration longer, make him stronger. Mm -hmm. And like just smoked the entire place. It was amazing. Yeah. Um that 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 kind of thing is cool. It hasn't I haven't gotten one that strong again yet, but you know, Matter of time. Yeah, yeah. The tour guys, the tour guys stuff. Uh, yeah. Other than that one where I got those double hearts that sort of negated the fire wing stuff, there hasn't been anything else that's been too crazy. Yeah, it's mostly been like dungeon stuff and like figuring out like 
the whole <laughs> adventure table and like yeah like being basically called an idiot as we're <laughs> as i'm sort of doing that so no it hasn't been yeah there's been yeah, mostly in dungeons so um random question have you gone and gotten an alternate soul shape yet no no wait no you can can you do that if you're not night fae oh no only if you're night fae yeah right well, you went right. kirian right i'm not picking stupid night fae terrible but fae lines th- all right you're a mistweaver i guess it doesn't yeah it's, it's it's still pretty stability in the game up there i actually so as an aside i wanted to start a youtube channel <laughs> where all mm-hmm. i do is review spells and like, <laughs> rate them on a scale but singular spells like one out of one, one like, spell <laughs> So, so this is an aside, and I'm going to take this break, Rona, to, to describe this. But if you ever – I don't know if you watch on YouTube. There's a guy named Doug DeMiro, and he reviews cars. And he has at the end of every review is, like, the Doug score. And he's like, I got the weekend score and the performance score. And it's, like, a number of, like, there's three categories in each. And he numbers on, like, one through ten, and you get a total score at the end. And I want to do that but for, like, wow spells and basically, like, rank them in terms of, like, usefulness, like, how pretty they are, like, aesthetics. And in any event uh, – that night feline stomp would win 10 out of 10 like it's the, the prettiest looking spell um it's it's but yeah yeah i definitely have run into issues with it in dungeons where like i have to move out of it because of other stuff being dropped on it but mm-hmm. um it's actually like a lot larger than the animation that's actually on the ground so it's usually not that hard to stay in it yeah yeah it's no like, it's uh if, if if I put that on the ground and we've got a mage in the group that also put blizzard on the ground, if I stay, if I keep the mobs in the blizzard, I'm probably also in the face. Mm-hmm. That's a, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, we haven't, all my, yeah, I haven't seen, I haven't run with any monks that have feline stomps, so it hasn't been, I haven't been able to, uh, to see how cool that looks, but, um, but yeah, on beta when I played with it, it was definitely the coolest looking spell, so, um, Cool. Yeah, and I th- I think the only other the final thing of the week that I wanted to talk about was just on the a little bit on the fate system and like alts, right? Yeah. Um, like what your experience has been and things like that. So it sounds like we both started at least all you finished your paladin. I'm still sort of in the middle of my shaman. Yeah. Um, but you said you primarily level just through dungeons on your your paladin. Yeah. Um, and if you are only interested in leveling quickly, and you are a tank or a healer, that is probably the fastest way to go. Um, is pick threads of fate, pick up all of your zone quests, and then just spam dungeons. And at like level fifty-eight or fifty-nine, stop, go finish your zone quests, and then turn them in. Um, mm-hmm. because the four zone quests by themselves are like almost enough to from fifty-nine to sixty. I might do that on my shaman then. Yeah, um, it's it's really good XP. Um, you know, I think doing it as a tank is probably less insanity-inducing. Because you get more control over the instance, and in normal, especially if you've got mythic gear, like my paladin had mythic gear, but like, I, I didn't need to care about it. Like, the, the healer could be dead, and I'd be fine. For, yeah. Until around like 57, when my haste dropped to basically zero. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, that's been that. Uh, and I did some side quests while I was you know, taking a break from dungeons and still wanted to do some things. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably going to level my DK by doing side quests, uh, at least initially, until I get Shadowlands gear. Currently, I level 50, and that is not high enough to keep uh, normal normal dungeons. Slightly low. Slightly low. Slightly low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say that I I started in the one. I think the one thing that hurt me is that I started doing fate in Arnweld, and in Arnweld AP has you basically do every side quest in that zone. So like. It was just like do all these quests you just finish i'm like i don't think i really want to do this right now i thought the fates thing was supposed to be cool or supposed to be like quicker or just not yeah. having to do a campaign um i think the side quests are a lot slower than doing yeah. campaign yeah i think so too now that i think about it um but yeah i mean well i'll i'll probably just do that dungeon thing uh pick up the four zones and and go there but yeah. um it is cool that they added a separate way to level that is not just do the campaign again that seems almost fast like it seems like if you just spam dungeons you can get it done in like almost half the time because like if you did the campaign so my paladin hit 60 in probably less time than it took my monk to hit 60 um but at the same time like i'm really happy that it's optional you don't have to do it because yeah. okay so final fantasy when you do the main story quest the first time through uh the quest is complete you're done you don't want to level an alt job 
you can't do that again. Your only option is to spam dungeons. Or there's a couple other things you can do for XP, but the side quests in Final Fantasy don't give barely any XP. So really, your only option is to spam. Yeah. And honestly, I hate it. Um, I leveled through dungeons here partially to learn the dungeons. Like they're all new, so it's actually I'm okay with it. They're all new, right, right, right. and it didn't take that long. Um, and uh, some of it I did with guildies, so it was it was you know hanging out with friends. Yeah. But I'm really glad that it's like I will be able to you know hop on my hunter in a couple of weeks and just go back through the campaign again. And yeah. Have that option. Yeah, that is that is that is nice to to be able to like flip back and forth. So, um, so cool. Any other first week thoughts left? Any other? This has been a really smooth launch for how buggy right. the beta was right up until launch. Like things went pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's gone well. Yeah, I would agree. Um, there's not been, I mean, other than sort of like overloaded servers, you know, hasn't been too much. They've been pretty quick to to pick up and change things, which is good for us as players i think it i kind of feel bad for the developers <laughs> like yeah having to having to do stuff over the holidays and stuff like that but um but yeah i mean it's it's honestly been smoother than i was expecting um i think the the final week or the final or the extra month really helped them particularly i feel like people rag on the mall right now, and i do too because I, I think it's an unfun zone but like knowing where the mall was six weeks ago and where it is now like the mall six weeks ago was like nothing. Like you just, yeah. there was very little in there. Like it was a gateway to get to, 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 to Torghast, right? And that was basically it. So, um, you know, they basically put together almost, I think, a full zone in, in a couple of weeks, which, you know, or at least half a it, zone. Right? It ended up being a lot closer to um, Hamlet's Isle than it was initially looking. Especially yeah. because like, okay, so there's still Stygia to get your socket. Let's let's be real. There is a real power progression thing there if you really want to commit okay. to it. Um, I'm trying to decide how much I care about sockets because honestly, like personally, I don't give a shit. It's more just like, am I going to get crap from people in guild if I just don't even do sockets on my main? Yeah. Like I'm not. I, I have already told people I'm not doing them on alts. I'm not doing mod dailies on alts. I cannot make. Them. I will not do it. <laughs> um, but. I feel like I should actually do those on main to make sure I actually can get sockets when it's relevant, even though sockets yeah. are such a small thing. It's they're so tiny. I mean, I think the for me, I'll probably target doing sockets on like legendary. So I think it's gonna depend on how many I. Can you socket a legendary? So you could. Okay. Add it to like you can still add it because the legendary item is treated just like a regular item. So I'm almost. Oh. I mean, don't quote me on this, but. I hadn't even thought of that. I believe that's probably that, yeah. I believe you can Ooh. since they're just regular items. So, um, so I mean that'll probably be if you can do that. That'll be the one thing I actually farm sockets for. Just to, I mean it, it's an item you're never gonna replace, right? Yeah. Generally speaking, so um, it makes sense to put as much power into it as you can. So, um, but yeah, other than that, I probably won't. I'll still do my mall dailies on my main just because I'm a sucker for like I said, bars going up and bars go up. He's got a rep. It goes up. Um, but yep, uh yep. but yeah i mean I, I i won't be doing alt stuff very much on in the mall so there is one more thing i want to touch on that i forgot to add to the show notes and it is specifically okay. about simulations right now so okay. we had a couple things this week that, that came up um first off there's an, an error in the apl they got posted on raid bots so br very briefly it wasn't casting breath of fire on for brewmasters um that got fixed but um there's a couple other things that you know, it's it's a work in progress. Um, I, I was telling people, I was still doing Sims on Sunday. Like, Sunday night, I was doing Sims. Like, finalizing things. We ran into another bug with Wind Fury Totem and how it interacted with some of the monk code. It was causing really crazy behavior. So, like, I was still doing Sims Sunday night to try and write the guides. Um, and so that meant, in particular... I didn't get much of any AoE sims done for Brewmaster. We have a recommendation on the, the site for Stor Storm Sout's uh, last keg. Yeah, Storm Sout's last keg, which is the Keg Smash Legendary for Mythic Plus. Because the sims that I had put it as the, the best for AoE damage, and it has some incidental like good stuff for Mythic Plus, like Snap Threat, 
because you can Rick Smash twice on pull, and it's like super, super good. Um, but we are going to find other issues with Sims. We actually have, all, I've had one pointed out to me today. Um, weapons of Order for Brewmaster resets your Keg Smash cooldown. It's currently not do that, doing that in Sims, so Kyrian's going to get a little bit better. Um, so there is some stuff like that, and uh, it, it's a work in progress. Don't expect things to be exactly the same two weeks from now as they are today, even if Blizzard doesn't change any of our stuff. Just, just as a product for that. And there's also, if you try Droptimizer and like simming all of the, the dungeon trinkets and stuff, some of the agility trinkets are still not implemented. Be mindful of that. Interesting. Yeah, I know that, I mean, the, the one thing that, that sort of is, is scaring, not scaring me, but just in the vein of Sims is a lot of like, we talked about the mage legendary change, right? Like I'm worried about them stealth changing not stealth, but like changing items or changing powers or abilities, right? And not yeah. making a post about it. Yeah. Because like from a Mistweaver perspective, like we've we've given them a lot of feedback on like bugs that we think are bugs in some of our legendaries and, and some of our abilities, right? And so right now we don't we don't know if they've yeah. changed them or not. So they could change them next week and that will wildly change the power of what we're going after. So I mean, essentially anybody that's asked in, in Discord has been like, hold off don't craft your legendary until the start of mythic week like yeah. there's no point you won't need it for heroic if your raid leader says you need it for heroic you that individual it. is short-sighted and probably an idiot so i'll be i'll be completely <laughs> um, harsh about, yeah but a little harsh but yeah so i mean um yeah yeah and Sims are all even place, even so. when you look at coming the abilities like i mentioned that Bayline stomp you don't have to visually be in the stomp to get the benefit of being in the stomp um and if that's a bug and they fix the hitbox on it fix i think it's how it's i think it's working as intended but if they don't think it's working as intended and come back and like fix it so you have to stand in the blue bits to get the benefit of it that ability becomes hot trash like instantly regardless of this what the sim said the ability sucks at that point like th there are still real risks that they could fix things that make they make what we've done like useless yeah um, yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see but yeah All right, it's been it's been a fun week though i like i said fun. like we were talking about this before we talked like i had forgotten about the podcast until like last night i was like oh we gotta we gotta do this on saturday yeah uh <laughs> yep so um but yeah and it was uh it's been a fun week i really i want to say again like the level of like the, the lack of grind of continuous grind oh. has been so good i got I, I had on wednesday on my monk i was like okay so i did my tour guest i have a mythic zero group planned with some some people for tomorrow so i don't need to touch those yet i've done my callings i've done my mock quests i'm done yeah. and i went and started my paladin because i knew like there was there's basically I I could try and do all the heroic dungeon, but I'm doing mythics the next day. Like why bother? Yeah. Um. So like there there was basically nothing I could do to continue advancing my monk, and it was great. I went and yeah. started on my paladin. Um. Been playing that a bunch. That's been fun. Um. And I actually like this is launch week, which is like the busiest time, and I actually spent some time this afternoon, you know, playing games with uh my brothers and, you know didn't feel like I was missing out on potential island grinding time or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, spent, I spent time getting mounts. Like, I, yeah. I spent time, like, getting a couple it's been mounts, great. like, yeah, round and random in the world. So it's been, it's nice that the grind isn't as bad. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll see if it continues. Like, the, I think the, the whole grind is sort of a lot of, like, self-inflicted stuff. Like, just as players, like, you put yeah. it out there, we're going to do it. But To, to um, some degree, you're right. To some degree, like, Talia was definitely tuned with that last trade of the first artifacts in mind. And that's as much on Blizzard as it is on us. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, yeah, I mean, there was, I guess there is a little bit on both sides. But it's definitely been nice to, like, log in and do, like, swoops. Like, that's what we call it, right? Like, yeah. log in and do our swoops, like our dailies or whatever, and be done within, like, an hour. And then, like, 
not have to then continue to grind something. It's just like, all right, well, I can level my shaman. I can, hey, there's this cool mount that you can get if you like put a bunch of pieces together in Ardenweld and, and yeah. you know, you get to ride around in like a little, yep. I don't know what it is. Like I went and thing. got a soul shape variant for my monk. Yeah. Um, I still need to go and get some more because like th there's just a bunch of them. There's like 30 yeah. of them. It's kind of cool. Uh, I got a wolf, yeah. wolf hawk, uh, which nobody else was on to do the rare. So I, I soloed the rare as brewmaster, and it took me literally 10 minutes to kill it. But Jesus. Uh, yeah, the fla the flavor stuff is cool. Like having that back and like, I think, I don't know, in general, a lot of players will look at the, like the content and like the, is this hard or, you know, is this power there? How unbalanced or balanced something is. But I think a lot of this extra stuff that Blizzard's put in, I don't remember this stuff being there in BFA. It wasn't. And if it was, yeah. If, I mean, know. maybe, it I mean, like, there's the flavor stuff in the islands, but... Like, I yeah, know like, people... I, islands... I, I won't say nobody did islands for that reason, but as a, like, a, a, a fraction of the time people spent in islands, people didn't spend time in islands going after mounts and things. Like, I'm yeah. sorry, Sinzu. I'm sorry, Bolty. I know you both did. You are two out of millions. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's been cool to have that sort of stuff there, and um, yeah, even some of like yeah, some of the new world quests are cool. So like, there's Flappy Bird as a world quest now. I saw that. I have there. It's, I saw that. Yeah, there's um, that one. There's the the there's the Maldraxxus one where you have to run around the theater of pain in the center of Maldraxxus. You get like speed bursts, and you have to like yeah. light five brazers in time. That's been like cool. Um, yeah, there's one there's in, a lot of, like, in Bastion. This is not the same kind of fun, but it is definitely fun. There's one in Bastion. Um, the one where you train the robo cat whatever it is oh yeah and uh all those wind drakes on the ground are all skinnable oh yes so yes, i spent yeah i sat yes. there skinning that while i was doing that world quest and honestly spent like three times as long there as i needed to to actually complete the world quest but i got like two stacks of skins out of it great that's awesome that's awesome um, but yeah, no, I think I, I, I will say that I was probably pretty apprehensive going in, but it's been, it's been a good, good launch, good launch so far. So we'll see the next big thing is like, you know, heroic week, how the raid turns out and stuff like that. Uh, but it's been a good, solid, solid first week. So, um, so cool. I think it's, is it Q and A time? I think it is. Oh, yes. All right. So as always, friends. Uh, you guys can submit your questions to either, you know, Emelson or myself. Uh, we'll answer them here on the show. Um, and yeah, it's my favorite time because people ask some really good questions. Um, and this first one uh, comes from, uh, well, we're just going to call him a regular at this point, uh, comes from Arkenheit, yep. which I, I'm nailing it, I'm killing it. Um, you got his name down, or their name down. I know. So that's basically means you're regular at this point. Um and they ask, uh, Castle Nathria is coming soon. Uh, looking back on first bosses of an expansion, example, Omnitron, Stone Guards. So Omnitron was Cataclysm, Stone Guard was Mop. Um, which of these introductory bosses is second best in your opinion, and what's holding it back from cinching the top spot? Okay. So, so this is yeah. totally your question, Anam, <laughs> because I started raiding Mythic in Antorus. I mean, the only first boss of an expansion I actually did when it was current on Mythic was uh, Talek. Talek, yes. Which was pretty buggy and a real pushover. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was so... I actually had to look this up because I don't remember all of the first bosses. Um, and so it's asking what the second best is. I wish I should mention what I think the best first boss is, and I'll go from there. Okay. Um, so I think I think Kargath from um, from Warlords of Draenor in High Mall probably the best first boss, uh, just in terms of like mechanics, the sort of going in the expansion, what it meant. Um, it sucked that Kargath, being a warlord, was one of the first bosses. Again, still a pushover as a first boss, but he had some interesting mechanics in terms of like. You know, utilizing people get fixated. You got to make sure they get trapped, making sure you keep his energy at a certain level. Um, so was, there was stuff going on. Um, so in terms of second best boss, uh, is actually Talek. Uh, really? In terms of my second favorite boss, and and it's for, it might be like recency bias, right? Okay. Being that like we just did it, but um, I think the the elevator and elevation changes um, 
it was one of the it's like one of the first not one of the first times i've used it but one of very limited times i've used like elevation like that in terms of not a terrible way like alec here in terms of making you almost swim right like, swimming elevation changes suck um and when you, you have elevation behemoth in eternal palace yeah exactly yeah like yeah where you have like levels of things it's just bad to, to keep track of a z-axis in, in terms of wow but you know talic i think was cool as a first boss because it started out really cool you had to fight him he's like stuck and then you sort of like descend into old ear as sort of like a movement um and sort of as, as you go through the fight so i mean i think talic is a, is a first boss probably the second best um other ones like if you mention anything in from emerald nightmare it's I don't remember that being more than like a five man mythic most of the time, like difficulty wise, it was sort of a joke all around. Um, you mentioned stone guards. I actually don't know what stone guards did. It was four bosses. I remember, and they had colors and you had to do something with the colors. Maybe it was cool, but it was so long ago. I forget. Um, and then Omnitron, I played a resto druid and I wanted to kill myself. So, um, yeah, it's not cataclysm. Not Omnitron is actually one that I did, um, sort of. Oh, really? Uh, I pugged it normal a little bit in Cataclysm. Not while it was current. This mm-hmm. was before Dragon Soul came out, so whatever tier came before Dragon Soul. That's like Firelands, yeah. Yeah, so Firelands. Like, yeah. Um, so I tried to pug normal. We eventually killed Omnitron. That was like the first boss that I killed while it was relatively current. And mm-hmm. for those who don't remember, gear scaling was not as zany in Cataclysm as it was in like bfa and legion like it wasn't completely trivial to do that. Yeah. um and then we we uh could not do magma in that pug it did not happen but yeah, uh that's i remember on the truck. yeah yeah i mean that those I, I think yeah talc was cool um and then i'll give i'll give a, a, a honorable mention to lucifron as the first boss in Molten Core, just because it was the first raid boss I ever did in, in WoW. And, uh, the, the, the first raid boss in WoW. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to be technical, like Upper Black Rock Spire at the time was really yeah, a raid, okay. and you could have you could treat it like that. But yeah, no, the first, like, true, like, 40 man, yeah, was, uh, was Lucifer, which was like, it was so cool. Like, I still get that feeling sometimes. Like, I was yeah. talking about, like, the, the, like, the, um, like, the environment or, like, the, uh, what's the word i'm looking for ambiance some sort of term that means that of like zoning into that raid is like similar to like the night like they going looking at back at that raid the entrance and being like wow this is crazy and then doing it thinking about like night like ardenweld or like bastion and just being like the arts crazy sorry i can't stop talking about how good this expression was. no yeah (laughs) i get it in terms of like the art so i get it um so cool so arcanite thank you very much like i said uh Cat, or Cargath number one, Talak number two, honorable mention Lucifron uh, for first introductory bosses. Um, I think Shriek, Shrekwing, Shriekwing, however you say it, it's going to be trash. So that'll be not even on my list after this. We'll see. Um, <laughs> all right, cool. All right. So next up is Hursty Zikletis <laughs> Scenarius. Zerkles. There's a D in there. I didn't say it um it's okay scenarios. we can pretend the d is silent yeah uh they ask uh what covenant should i pick just kidding he, then they added just kidding it's we've gotten a lot of those questions in discord this week uh but they actually ask um what uh what are you and emelson or what do you and emelson think is the best dessert and why okay i don't remember if i told you this and um but i don't like cheesecake I also don't like pie crust. You're limiting your choices on the best but, desserts out there, Emelson. But I mentioned that because I do like, I had a chocolate mousse cheesecake with chocolate cookie crust. Oh. That was one of the best desserts I've ever had. Interesting. And like it defied all the odds. It got past my dislike of cheesecake and of pie crust, and it was amazing. That's awesome. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of cheesecake. I would say is probably my favorite dessert. Um, but the best dessert is actually, uh, oh god, I'm gonna sound like such a kid. It's called it's called dirt cake. Okay. And the reason it's the best dessert is, is, it's not cake by the way. It's mm-hmm. literally pudding 
with crushed up Oreos in it, like yep. all mixed together with gummy worms inside. Oh, and like a and like a layer of like black dirt on top of it. And then, so my grandma used to make this for all of our birthdays as kids, and she'd put like a like a edible like sugar flour on the top. Like it was basically mm -hmm. a flour made out of pure sugar. Um, but we always wanted dirt cake because it was like, it was so fun to just be like, you get like a big bowl of it and you'd be like, I'm eating dirt. This is great. And like, oh, we found a worm and it's like gummy worm. Oh, it's so, so good. I love gummy worms. I don't so. like pudding, so I, that wouldn't fly with me, but. I mean, you could probably make it with something else, but it yeah, was basically I'm... like. It was I mean, so I actually good. don't know if you could because it's like, what, what, what sort of thing could you substitute with pudding? And yeah, it has to be. It can't be like actual cake because like, yeah, you can't like dig up cake but um yeah i guess it would have to be like you could do it with jello i also don't like jello it's a it's a texture thing oh, fair texture enough, like fair I, I don't know yeah uh you could do it with ice cream that would be oh you could that you would be could. amazing what, wouldn't it just be cookies and cream ice cream it would be cookies and cream ice cream with gummy worms in it oh so the only problem okay so this is the tra i thought i know this is not your question hersey but i i fall into this trap all the time with ice cream i'm a huge fan of gummy candy i will like mm -hmm. twizzlers Dot, dots, number one favorite, and then Harborough gummy bears. I could eat Harborough gummy bears every day for the rest of my life. Love those things. Um, but the problem is, I always get them in my ice cream. Ice cream is very cold. Yeah, gummies do uh, not do well when they're cold. They, they turn into hard. little cement bricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so every time I get a Sunday, I'm like, I'm like, oh god, what do you got? Gummy. Throw some gummy bears in there, some sprinkles, maybe some crushed up, you know, cookies. Cool, awesome. I love this. And I'm eating it, and like I hit the first gummy bear. I'm like, this is why I never get gummy bears on my ice cream. <laughs> and then you do it again. <laughs> yeah, then do it again every time. But yeah, it's it's absolutely awful. Um, so well, gummy bears and ice cream would be awful. I feel like maybe if you get like a certain gummy worm that didn't like freeze up. Maybe, or but... or okay, this is gonna be really weird. I don't know what it is about pudding and jello that I absolutely hate. Yeah. But if you like take chocolate ice cream, and it gets a little bit soft, that's okay. fine. Like well, then, and then you could put them in after. Yeah. 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 Okay, I could get behind that. Like half melted chocolate ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. You, you could make dirt. There's a that. very small window of time in which you can <laughs> actually eat it. <laughs> you, have, you have this. You have this like four minute like time frame. <laughs> this is where the cake is good. <laughs> Before bad, after it's literally just milk. <laughs> like right here. This is where you got it. That's yep. hilarious. Um, so yeah, so best dessert, dirt cake, and because it makes you feel like a kid, and I love gummy worms. So yeah, um, no, awesome that's ball. that's a good choice. Yeah, Hersty, thank you very much for the question. Um, and you learned a little bit more about why you don't get gummy worms in your ice cream. Um, all right. So final question. I think we might have already touched on this, but uh, this comes from Hanu, and I wanted to put in that because it was a long one, and it seemed like uh. Good some, first week question. Stuff. Yeah, very good first week question. Um, so basically, you know, Hanu asks, did you both do a Mythic Plus tour? We talked about yes. this, you know, we both have. Um, and then goes on to say, you did a Mythic Plus preview a couple months ago. Um, and um, they're basically saying, I think an update to that would be good in a live segment. Um, they say, I think a number of players gravitated to Windwalker based on the perception that while rating might be touch and go, Mythic Plus would be a great way for Windwalker to experience the game. I know this is the type of thing I'm interested in playing as well as hearing from content creators such as yourself. Um, so it sounds like sort of, you know, the idea would be is that a lot of the initial feedback from Windwalkers coming out of the beta was that, generally speaking, Windwalker going to raiding would not be a strong choice, we'll say, right? Yeah, it's um, been an ongoing joke in the, in our guild that, like, the only thing we need for me to play my paladin instead of the brewmaster in raid is for us to recruit a Windwalker. Yeah. But that's not happening. Yeah, you're not going to recruit one. So, mm -mm. Um, so yeah, so I think the idea is that, you know, they're they're thinking that people are still going to play Windwalker because yeah. you know, they should be strong in Mythic Plus, right? Which um, I actually, we, we took, we had to pug a DPS for an alt Mythic Zero day, and we grabbed a Windwalker, and they slapped. They yeah. absolutely slapped. They were doing, like, Number one, number two damage every single pull. Uh, on the bosses, they fell behind, but that's to be expected. Mm -hmm. um, but bosses are not usually the thing that's holding you back from timing a Mythic Plus. Like, yeah. if you die on it, sure. Or if they're extremely long, like the last boss of Siege of Boralis, sure. But usually it's the trash, and Walker seems good. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, yeah, Windwalker and Mythic Plus seems very, very strong. Um, I don't know if we can, I don't know how I feel about trying to do an updated, like, Mythic Plus preview kind of thing. Because it's gonna, there's a couple of things with that, right? So, there's the fact that, for one thing, neither of us are a really big Mythic Plus pusher. I will do my weekly key. Um, mm -hmm. Early in the expansion, I will do more than that to get gear. But I'm not doing a ton of keys. And yeah, it, there's like a couple other things with that too. Is, is like going through each dungeon in detail takes time. It takes a lot of time. Our episodes are already around two hours long. And we can maybe get through three in one episode in like 30 minute chunks. Plus Q&A right. at the end and we can review at the front. Like there's there's timing issues and there's eight dungeons, so we'll be looking at three episodes of that. Um and then Mythic Plus changes. Like even if they don't change the dungeons, the the routes that people use change as people find new things to do with them. Um there's a lot to go over between different affix combinations and balancing outside of the um like the Mythic Plus themselves, like changes the classes, changes how people pull the dungeons. So I don't think we're likely to do a dedicated like Mythic Plus recap kind of thing. But I would say you can probably expect a lot of the kind of thing that we did today where we kind of talked about our experiences doing the, the Mythic Zero World Tour. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I definitely think we'll talk a little bit about once we get that first week of Mythic Plus and um, you know, how the first set of affixes goes and, and what we sort of see as the probably touch on a little bit on like what we see the more difficult dungeons will end up being just based on the trash and how we see it scaling and stuff like that so yeah that's a it's a tough segment to put together yeah. um so it's, it's a lot of talking yeah uh, i don't want i don't want to have another retrospective episode where <laughs> we had to split it into <laughs> yeah four hours of, of talking so um, yeah but yeah i mean i think i mean honestly just from what I've seen, like you, you have it too, Emerson. I have it too, like because I played Windwalker. I play Windwalker when we do like swoops with my with my friends, right? Or um, even in some of like the early heroic dungeons, I ended up playing Windwalker. And dude, they do even with my terrible play, like do good damage. They do a lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in in so. in AOE, they do real good. In single target, they still fall behind, but in AOE, they do real good. Like SEF into a whole lot of spinning crane kicks is still silly damage. Uh you you know, you SEF, you hit Mr. Fury, Rising Sun kick something, and you're at max SEK stacks, you start spinning like a mad. And uh you're number one on the damage meters. It's pretty cool. And Zuin's Gale Burst mechanic is AoE, so Right, yeah. So you're doing yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, In AoE. Definitely, yeah. yeah, it definitely popped off like the the old like uh like videos you'd see of like frosty k's right just like literally their bar and like yeah. everybody else's bar is like all the way back here yeah doing like a million dps like i felt like that for a pull or two for sure so. um so i would definitely not be surprised to see woodwalkers in keys i after having done a bunch of these dungeons i'm skeptical of seeing any melee in keys honestly oh, yeah Oh boy, did they really go ham on making sure that ranged could compete in Mythic Plus. Oh my god. There are so many things that force melee to disconnect from bosses for an extended period of time. Mechanics on trash that suck. There's a lot of fervent strikes like Trotsky went over a couple weeks ago with us. That would be the main limiter, I would say, for, for Windwalker actually being brought to keys. Is actually, are you going to bring a melee at all? If you are going to bring a melee, is it going to be something that doesn't also bring a shroud? Yeah, yeah. Skipping is definitely going to be back, but um, but I don't think I don't think it's as crazy. Um, hopefully, it won't be as crazy. So yeah. Um, but cool. Thank you, thank you, Hanu, for the question. Um, and I think that's it. We did we did a short number this week. Yeah. Primarily because I forgot to ask for questions <laughs> before this morning. So, uh, but no, if you guys, like I said, you have any other questions, shoot them over to Emil Center myself. We'll, uh, we'll answer it. We'll answer any questions you can tell. We'll answer dessert questions. I will ruin mm -hmm. your name from a pronunciation perspective. Um, so it'll be, uh, it'll be a good time. So uh, thank you all for the questions. 
So I think I think that's it. I think that wraps this episode. I think that wraps it up for today. So um, yeah, I mean, if you enjoyed this podcast and you want to support it and the other work that we do over on the Pico Serenity, uh, the guides, which are all up now, you can go and read those, the work on Sims, the all of the stuff that we do. You can go support our Patreon over at patreon.com slash peak of serenity. And uh, as always, you know, we really support, you know, support, really appreciate support through Patreon or, you know, just coming and hanging out, especially right now. Like if you have read the guides, it's actually a big help if you come to the questions channel and just like somebody asks a question that's in the guide and you just link the guide to them. That's a huge help right now. Well, or the, the other big help too that I don't think I don't I hate to cut in on your outro oh, here, but it. the other big help is like asking questions if something looks wrong. Yes. Because like yes. the like I have written so much about Mistweaver for, for like the last it's hard stuff to keep track that of. like like I today somebody brought up that I'd like the gem switched about yeah. what you should gem. And I'm like it's like a, a simple thing, but like in my mind I'm like I'm not going back to that consumable. I, I I had the boss that uh you get one of our conduits from wrong. I had it yeah. as a boss from Halls of Atonement, but listed as it, it as in Sanguine Depths. It's actually from General Call in Sanguine Depths, uh, according to the Dungeon Journal. It changed on uh, beta. Like it, it, it was originally in Halls of Atonement, but it got changed to Sanguine Depths, and I just kind of combined the two into something that was impossible. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, I mean, yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to cut it on the oh, yeah. show, but, but yeah, ask those questions and point out things you think might look wrong, because, you know, nobody... To be fair, we all want we just want it to be right, generally yep. speaking. So Yep. Yeah. And that's the same thing like that thing I mentioned earlier about Sims with weapons of order for, for Brewmaster. Someone brought that up in, in the brew questions. Like it, it helps. So yeah. As always, you know, thank you all for listening. And we will be here next week streaming again eight thirty PM Eastern at twitch.tv slash Uh and hope to see you next week. Bye.